We begin with the political um, political rather issues in Nazareth, where the ANC Youth League NEC has uh, grown in numbers from. 30 to 46 members. Today marks the end of the long-awaited elective conference and members are currently nominating from the floor additional members of the NEC. While we wait for President Sarah Maposa to wrap things up at that conference, we saw that he had arrived a few minutes ago and we've got Moloko Moloto who is on the floor and brings us the very latest. A very good afternoon to you Moloko and of course uh, the President are arriving rather early and we are still seeing uh, that nomination are still taking place for additional members uh, from the floor. Um, uh, give us the current lay of the land and when we expect things to wrap up before the president can address the delegates. Good afternoon, Rofiwa. Yes, you're correct. The president of the ANC, Cyril Ramaphosa, arrived a short while ago. He is still in some holding room. But of course, the business of the youth Congress is uh, continuing. As you know, the top six uh, leaders or officials of the league were elected uh, unopposed last night. And uh, at this point in time, they are just uh, nominating the additional members from the floor, meaning that uh, at least uh, out of uh, the Delegates who are here, whoever is nominated from the floor must reach, I think, 25% threshold from the floor in order to be eligible to be on the ballot. But let me speak to one of the delegates here. He joins me now. His name is Ashi um, Buntu. He is a delegate from the Sarah Bartman in the Eastern Cape. Legas, thank you so much for your time. If you can just tell us from your observation, are you happy with how you as young people have conducted yourself in this uh, Congress of the Young People. Uh, good, good afternoon, sir. Yes, I'm happy with how the things happened. Regardless of the delay of the registration before the conference resume, otherwise everything that happened yesterday, it moved smoothly. And we are happy that as young people of ANC Youth League to have a, a, a stable structure now that, is, uh, that will be leading us, hoping that by doing so, it will assist us as young people of ANC Youth League, working together with the leadership of the ANC in mobilizing young people so that we can work together in making sure that we change and we make sure that the vision of the late leaders of the ANC, Dr. Anthony Lambede, so that we can be able to practice and exercise on our own space. Now we have now we have a youth league that is active and that is vibrant. Now we are talking about the rebuilding, the branches are stable. Now we have made everything to be fine. I don't know when you came here, what mandate you had from your branch. Did the candidate that you preferred uh, emerge was in terms of the president, but the fact that uh, Malachi and his collective were elected unopposed along their slate, is that how you really think uh, is um, good for the image of the party, that somebody is given so much power without a contest? Uh, as the Eastern Cape, we were solid. We were supporting Gota and his core as for the SG because of his from Eastern Cape. So we supported them. We know them from uh, lower ranks, from other movements, COSA, SASCO, now we're here at the Youth League. So we know how is their leadership. I'm happy and, our, and we're supporting them. Thank you. What are your expectations of this newly elected leaders going forward in terms of them influencing the policy of the governing party, the ANC? Because certainly we know that there are people who have interest in the ANC NEC. That actually was confirmed by Figile Mbalula yesterday, who said that some of you in the Youth League were conniving with some of the ANC leaders to ensure that the, this conference is not held earlier. But how much influence do you think these newly elected leaders will have in the ANC NEC to implement policies that would favor young people? We fully support them and we, have, uh, we trust them that they will work together and we will make sure that whatever policies that we have adopted here yesterday, they will be able to present it to the ANC NEC so that we can work together and making sure that the ANC is also making those policies to be on the constitution. Let's talk about at least one key policy that you really believe is non-negotiable, it must be implemented, one that you debated here as delegates. 
uh, one of the policies is for the education. We want free education. As we know that we are African uh, children that are majority in the country and we are coming from poor uh, backgrounds. So when we are talking about the free education, we mean that NSFAS also must work together with us without checking the uh, requirements that will make the young people of South Africa to be not be able to be accepted in the institutions of uh, higher learning. Because that thing of uh, rejecting them will make them to be uh, not be accepted in the institutions of higher learning. I just want to speak to another young person. Let me check his name. His name is Stanley Lezualo. Thank you so much, sir. You are from Gauteng. Tell us then about uh, the, the delay that we are seeing here. How much uh, business of uh, Congress is uh, yet to be uh, discussed or finished? Because this is your last day. Thank you very much and good uh, afternoon to your listeners. Uh, my brother, look, I think where we are, because uh, we're in a renewal process, uh, it's never been easy. You would know that the Youth League, it's over 10 years now that uh, we've been wanting to revive the CNC Youth League. So under normal circumstances, um, post-elections would have to go to commissions, contribute meaningfully to the policy positions, and uh, that's exactly what we want to achieve. Um, when we are done nominating the additional members here, we are going to then ensure that some of the policy positions that we would have meaningfully contributed to um, become a resolution of this National Congress. So in other words, the, the commissions, the key discussions in terms of the policy direction uh, were not held. Uh, you focused mainly on electing new leaders. Do you think that would inspire young South Africans that you claim to represent, the fact that you spent three days here, but you have not really managed to get to the nap of uh, issues that uh, are confronting them? Not necessarily. We must uh, also remember that um, the registration process needed to be clinical uh, to ensure that everyone who's here is rightfully a delegate that would take serious decisions because we all know that the National Congress is the highest decision-making body and um, we would not want to make uh, any mistakes with regards to that. But over and above, I think that um, where we are now, uh, we are confident that some of the um, positions that we would have uh, contributed here, which you would see in our ANC Youth League discussion documents, that on its own should tell you that young people are taken serious. We're very serious about the triple challenges. We're very serious about ensuring that young people are represented in the entire country. Yeah. Stanley, you guys as the Youth League members are known as the Young Lions. You are known to be expressing your views fearlessly. But the tone of the Secretary General of the ANC, Figile Mbalula, yesterday was that of um, the, he won't tolerate anarchy. He's clear that he's going to discipline anyone who steps out of line. And some members, delegates, and even some of the people who were in the NYTT were saying that he's actually threatening them. And uh, uh, there's that fear that he wants to plant among young people. Do you feel the same? Look, there's no fear whatsoever. Um, we must be brutally honest that um, it's only now that we got the autonomy of the ANC Youth League back. You would have heard uh, Comrade Mdumanana saying that now that we've elected the top six, uh, the autonomy of the Youth League is back. And we all know that um, coming from here when we go back, you will now feel the real Youth League on the ground. How are, you, how are young people on the ground going to feel you in terms of... Uh, the issues that confront them. Joblessness is very high. Unemployment rate among the university graduates. Uh, ten years ago, it was at about 5%. It has doubled now, ten years later. What are the practical interventions that you think this league of young people in the ANC must champion? I'll give you a classical example. Um, as the leadership of Gauteng, we would have participated in the ANC Provincial Conference where uh, we supported uh, Comrade Banyaza Lusufi to become the provincial chair and ultimately the premier of Gauteng. Um, the program that you see of Nasi Span would have been a resolution that emanates from uh, the contributions of the Youth League in that provincial conference. And we've been consistent. And that's what we wanted to contribute here in this National Congress to say, take it from Gauteng. We've set an example and we should drive this across the country. I understand as we conclude that uh, prior to this conference, some of the discussions, and actually uh, uh, Crispin Piri, uh, one of the people who are organizing this, one of the discussions he's been pushing is that 
the Congress must actually consider electing young people who are professionals, medical doctors, lawyers, engineers, accountants. He says they must swell the ranks of the ANC leadership structures. Do you think that will help, um, considering the fact that we know that the winners in any Congress are those who are able to convince the majority of those who will raise their hands? Look, I'll give you a practical example. The provincial spokesperson of the ANC League in Limpopo province um, is one of the candidates we are filling here, uh, and he happens to be a doctor by profession. So we are very serious about this thing. And you will see for yourself, even amongst those that we would have included, uh, that we would want them seeing uh, in the leadership, they are respective professionals, and we are very serious about including different uh, facets yeah. of those faculties. Is that not going to disenfranchise the other rank and file members of the ANC Youth League who are not professionals but perhaps are showing some leadership uh, qualities to a point that you may end up creating the Youth League to be an elitist organization? Not at all. Um, we are very clear when it comes to striking a balance and you should uh, see the outcome of uh, the 26th uh, National Executive Committee, you'll see that there's a clear balance in terms of profession and even those who are genuine activists of this particular organization. Are you happy, Stanley, with the fact that it would appear delegates of the Youth League are still not ready to field a woman for the position of president? <laughs> Let me tell you, look, for us to have a female deputy president, this is a clear signal from us that the next one we are going to ensure that a female president takes over. Stanley Litswalo, thank you so much. He is a delegate from the Houghton province. The issue of gender is very interesting, Rafiwa, because you would recall that the ANC Youth League was founded in 1944. But discussions, of course, were held even prior to the formation of this league by the likes of Nelson Mandela or Walter Sisulu. But women were also the young women, the likes of Lillian Ngoi, uh, who became the first woman to be elected into the National Executive Committee of the ANC. But also the likes of Aydam Duana, who went out to, in 1948 to become the first uh, president of the ANC Women's League. But we, you did not see, as much as uh, some people were saying, the first president of the ANC Youth League, uh, 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 Anton Lembete, uh, was one of the intelligent young people at the time. But some people are saying Lillian Boy, for instance, qualified to be the president of the ANC Youth League. So many years later, it would appear members of the ANC still don't believe that a woman should occupy that position, not only in the Youth League, but also in the ANC. The mother body indeed, uh, Moloko Molot, and saying, uh, the last guest today, saying that the fact that we've got a deputy who is a woman means that they will be ready to have the president be a woman in the next uh, conference or thereafter. Moloko Molot, thank you very much for that update. And of course, we'll come back to you as we wait for the president to close off those proceedings.